could you give us some basics on the um, use of McGill's? Absolutely. So there's several uses of the McGill forceps. It's, it's, it's an interesting instrument, and it's designed uh, specifically for right or left-handed use. There are some left-handed McGill's available. I've never seen one in the wild, only in captivity, uh, <laughs> but it's designed to be a right-handed uh, instrument, largely because direct laryngoscopy is designed to be a left-handed maneuver. So most of the conventional uh, commercially available laryngoscopes are going to be designed for use by the operator's left hand, which is why you know, as we look here we see that the light source is on the left and it's designed to be used with the left hand. So a couple of ways that we use McGill's in the anesthesia world. One is obviously for foreign body extraction. Uh, we would first perform uh, a direct laryngoscopy, uh, identify the, the target of the foreign body that we're after. The nice thing about the McGill forceps is because of the way they're designed, the operator's hand is out of the way. So we can see the device easily being inserted into the oropharynx here. My hand is not obscuring my view whatsoever and I can easily grasp whatever foreign body it may be. And that's a, I think that's a very important point because so many times we try and mani manipulate using the McGill in different, um, you know, different hand locations, mm -hmm. uh, you know, try from below from, yeah. and, and, and you're recommending just come it's, from above. It's designed to be a head of bed instrument. Okay. Yeah. That's a it's great a, it's pearl. It's designed to be head of bed. And if you don't, you, if you use it any other way, then your hand's going to be in the way. You're going Absolutely. To... You'll be obscuring the view that you're trying to obtain with your operating hand. So again, it's, it's a right-handed tool, left-handed laryngoscopy, and you can see as I use it here, I have an unobstructed view of the tool's jaws in the oropharynx, and my hand is nowhere to be seen. It's completely out of view. Okay. So foreign body removal is one application. Another application that we use in anesthesia is uh, to facilitate nasotracheal intubation. Yes. So we will typically pass the tube via the nasopharynx uh, into the oropharynx, then perform either a video or direct laryngoscopy, use the McGill forceps to direct the tube into the glottic opening while we're advancing the tube simultaneously through the nose. So back in the day, I did a lot of blind nasal tracheal mm -hmm. intubations, and uh, but the McGill's is a much safer, much uh, assured way of making sure that's going in the direct, uh, correct location. Um, is there, uh, how often do you guys find that you're doing nasal tracheal intubations? Nasotracheal intubations vary with the type of procedures performed at a facility. Okay. So anytime we're seeing oropharyngeal surgery, a nasal intubation is going to be the preferred route because it gives the operating surgeon an unimpeded field of view. Right. Uh, total dental extractions are a great example. Uh, tongue base work is another great example. I, I'm assuming anesthesia does not use blind nasal trachea intubation at all, and that you'll end up mostly using the McGill's. Uh, so typically now, uh, with the ubiquity of the fiber optic scopes, if I do a nasal approach, it's almost always going to be with a fiber optic scope. That's, that is what I figured. And, and I'll tell you, the, the most common application I use for it now is severe angioedema with macroglossia.